Our next speaker will discuss the exciting topic of unlocking the power of data through Open API. Jiga Vasali, VP Solution Architecture, APJ at Solution uh, at Software AG, will share his expertise and experiences with us. Jigger is a seasoned technology professional, and he has involved in many strategic digital innovative initiatives and provided solutions to customers across the regions. Let's welcome him on stage. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. I think it's been four, four and a half years since I've been in Hong Kong. It's a pleasure to be back here. Uh, I know that I'm standing between you and lunch, so I'm going to make it <laughs> somewhat interesting. Uh, some of it has already been discussed by the team earlier, so it's going to be somewhat what you see out here. You might think that, hey, this is something that we spoke about just now in the panel discussion, but I'll try to see if I can give a twist to that and try to bring some different angle to it. All right? so. Just by way of introduction, I'm Peter Bansali. Uh, I have uh, been very passionate uh, about uh, the power, the transformative power that technology brings in sh shaping the future of an organization. And some of this you just saw earlier today, right? Uh, APIs, if you look at it, and we've been looking at it, think about that as arteries of digital ecosystem, right? It's arteries of digital ecosystem providing seamless connectivity to applications, services, and platforms. You've heard that today. Across this API is what you're doing, or through this API is what you're doing, is basically the information flow. So think about this, is at the heart of this whole thing lies data. That's what you're doing, right? APIs are there for you to consume information, take advantage of the data. So what I'm going to do in the next few minutes is going to walk you through some of the use cases that we have worked with our customers on and give you some ideas around that, as well as I'm going to give you and share some of the challenges and our thoughts around how you can take advantage of APIs and bring value to your organization. All right. So let me start with uh, something interest, some interesting facts, right? Uh, any guesses on how many uh, people do we reach out to on internet, uh, or the internet is available to today, or how many people are using internet today? Any guesses? I was reading an article and it said, you know what? Internet today is being used and it reaches out to 5.2 billion people. Right, 93% of that uses mobile smartphones to access information and consume information on internet. And if you look at the estimates that were done on this, it's around 180 zillion bytes of information that could be consumed by consumers, or by people, by 2025. That's a lot of data, right? And we are talking about in a year. Now let's say if we were to talk about this in 60 seconds, what happens or what can or what does happen in 60 seconds? Let's look at some of the examples out here. Okay, if you look at it from the industry stats perspective, I'm sure you're all familiar with UPS, right? UPS delivers about 11,000 plus packages in 60 seconds around the globe. Right? Apple takes around 70K per, per, per minute. That's what they make. And if you look at it in terms of charities and donations that are there, in about a minute, $3 million of donations are being made to charity organizations across the world. And these are the real stats. There is an organization called Domo, which conducts a lot of uh, research every year in terms of the data usage and what's happening, and they have a report published on this. So if you Google on Domo and look at the research, they will give you uh, more information on that. Now if I were to take this to the digital minute, let's look at it from the business perspective. 
right? We are all familiar with YouTube. We are all familiar with Twitter. We are all familiar with uh, Slack or those things. Look at the phenomenal amount of information that is getting generated and consumed in one event in the digital world. Yeah. All of these, by the way, is powered by APIs. Are you aware of this? Look at the power of API out there. What's happening today? What's made your life simpler when you're working with your messaging platforms or working on logistics or what you're doing? Okay, so let me move on to the next piece is in terms of from the business side of the context, right? Let, let me contextualize this from the business perspective. We as a business, as an organization, be it banking, be it logistics, be it insurance, be it retail, these organizations have evolved over a number of years, right? 20, 30, and some of them 150, 140, right? You've seen about that. And as the technology evolved, organizations invested in implementing those technology to take advantage of that and get value out of that. So they invested probably early days on mainframe, then on AS400, then on creating applications on open platforms, and now on cloud SaaS platforms, right? All of these, while it was supporting the business, generated data. There's a wealth of data out there, right? There's a wealth of information that, as an organization, that has been created, that has been generated, and accumulated over the years. While the business ecosystem changed, the business dynamics changed, we started doing business via partners. And that's where, if you look at it as internet evolved, the B2B model kept on evolving. The supply chain, the way the whole, in a manufacturing world, it all started. You can take raw materials from your partners, automate that, so that you can place orders, do invoices, so start automating your supply chain, and so on and so forth. But again, guys, this is generating a lot of information that an organization has access to today. And you know what? One of the topics that we discussed about was, this is where your most valuable asset lies. That's your data. Okay, and I'll talk about how you can leverage that asset to monetize or to make money or to generate experience or Okay, so why is it a challenge when organizations have so much of information, so much of data, so much of wealth of uh, stuff out there? Why is it a challenge to unlock and get some value out of it? Right, over the years, organizations have invested in technology applications and so on and so forth. And we also saw, and I think we heard about uh, earlier today, where the speed of change, the speed at which the business is looking to get access or drive change, drive innovation, introduce new products, new service in the market, uh, they need agility. They need faster way of doing things. While there is a legacy of systems out there and accessing that information is challenging. We heard about it, the siloed environment that customers have today. And this requires you to have a proper strategy in place to make this data available, okay? The other challenge that you see with this is a lot of organizations, while they realized that I need to make access this data available, so what they did was, okay, we give or we empower businesses or biz tech functions to also deploy newer technologies, newer apps, go ahead, drive your new business models, which in effect create a further a siloed environment by implementing SaaS applications out there which are very point, which are very specific, and what it did eventually was you started having a fractured enterprise, right? And this is where it started leading to challenges for the business to get that data across that huge vast environment that you have, legacy platforms, cloud SaaS application platforms, partner ecosystem platforms and so on and so forth, getting that into what you call single source of truth, 
that was being discussed earlier on, but you can't be doing that for every single thing. It, it's not easy. While you embark on those kind of journeys and you get into those single source of truth, it can take years and years. And that does not help you in the way in which the competitors are moving at the pace at which the competitors are moving. Right? So you need capabilities out there. You need enabling technologies out there which will help you to liberate that data. And this is where you've heard again this morning is where the capabilities that will help you to do that is about getting your integration strategy right. Look for capabilities that will allow you to access, bring that data from various applications. Have your, not only the strategy in place, but look for how, what could be done, how architecturally you can bring these things together and provide this information, uh, make it available to your business to be able to get value out of that. Operationalize that strategy. Operationalize, get the insights of the data. Try to understand what is the differentiating element or the unique thing that you as an organization have to offer. Do analytics on your data. Try to understand what is it that differentiates you based on that information. Right, and try to then get to the business to start innovating faster by providing an ability to expose that as a service, as a product, or whatever mechanism that will allow you to get value out of that. Okay, so to do that, uh, here is a very high level view. Try to, again, coming back to that, when you talk about integration, try to bring your integration capabilities, combine them, try to leverage the best of the breed of capabilities that you have in terms of trying to connect to your enterprise applications, be it legacy, be it uh, packaged apps, be it uh, cloud SaaS applications, or be it uh, uh, platform-based applications that you're building on the cloud today, right? Have an ability to make sure that you're able to connect to these applications faster, be able to pull out that information, Automate processes around that. Automate, orchestrate those integrations to a business function. Functionality, again, this afternoon, we, uh, early today in the morning, we heard about API as a product, API as a service, API as a function. So think about what those things are, what is valuable to you. Orchestrate those, strategize based on that, and make those things available to your B2B partners, be it as Sync ap synchronous APIs, asynchronous APIs, event-based APIs, leverage what works for you. Yeah, API becomes the vehicle for you to then expose that and integrate to either provide better channel experience to your customers or to drive new business models with your partners or to drive new business models to ecosystems that you are looking to bring into this mix. Yeah. On the other hand, as I said, while you have the data, while data uh, um, is sitting on your apps, you might be creating your data lakes, data hubs, data warehouses, whatever you have. Think about how can you make that <coughs> data available for business to perform that analytics. So think about how you create those pipelines. How can you make those pipelines seamless out there, that the pipelines don't break uh, in the middle when the changes happen. So architect your data pipelines, your data strategy based on those practices, based on tooling and frameworks that are available out here, which allows you to bring those data into those pipelines, create those pipelines, the frameworks out there. Even if changes occur, you get an alert, but it doesn't break while the, while the business is trying to do something around that. So there are technologies and uh, frameworks available that helps you to do that. Yep. And then make it available again for the business to understand where that uniqueness lies within your organization, where that differentiating capabilities lies within your organization, and try those value-based models for your organization. All right, let me quickly move into some of the examples of how some of these organizations have done it. Uh, so to be honest, uh, I was thinking and after looking at four, five years of this journey. I've seen banks as one of the big uh, and early adopters it. So I've not taken a banking example. I just assume that there might be a lot of banking 
uh, examples being discussed today considering HSBC was there. So I'm going to focus on different uh, vertical. And one of the thing I will probably start with is government. Um, UAE actually started the journey in terms of uh, identifying what they want to be known as, what to be, what what do they want the government's uh, biggest purpose to be and objectives in terms of uh, that uh, UAE as a whole. And one thing that they came out as a purpose was making the citizens and visitors happy. And to do that, Dubai measures what they call citizen happiness, people happiness, visitors happiness. Right? And around that, in 2012, they started the putting together a strategy in terms of how they are going to achieve their goals. They started to identify the journey that a citizen or a visitor takes the moment it starts the first touch point with the government agency. So as a visitor, my touch point of the agency, uh, with the agency could be that I'm going to apply for a visa. Right, and that process that it takes and the journey goes from. As a citizen, it could be as simple as utility bill payments. It could be renewal of passports. It could be renewal of uh, my electricity as I move from one property to another property and so on, right? Now, that those journeys were being documented, those journeys were being understood, and the government realized that if we wanted to make it very seamless, make it easier, for the citizens and visitors to experience on this, plus also go completely digital, uh, they had to look for an approach to bring all these agencies together and operate together. Right? Each agencies were doing their own forms, own processes, own applications that they've invested across a number of years. And at the same time, each, each agency has its own data, data privacy requirements as well. So here, what they did was they standardized on what they call digital integration hub. They created capabilities where each agencies were able to then bring those information out or services out and expose that as an API, make it avail available to other agencies to consume, to provide those seamless experience for citizens. As of 2021 December, in Dubai, the citizens are using more than about 40% uh, of their digital services are being used more than once a week. And more important thing is Dubai today is 100% paperless as of December 2021. The underlying capabilities they are leveraging to provide those seamless journey, seamless experience, information across different agencies, as well as for the visitors is via APIs. And this is this is based on the analytics, the analysis they did about their processes and information and drive from there. Drive from what they knew about it and with the purpose in mind. Let's look at a different example. I would say this is more kind of a, a new age kind of an organization, Octo Telematics. It's a telemetry company uh, based out of uh, Italy. It's a, it operates in Europe and uh, US markets. What they provide is telematics devices, right? These telematics devices, for example, are deployed on the cars. So there's a white box you deploy on the vehicle and you collect the data about the car, about the drivers and so on. This was their business in about, I would say, 2012, 2015, until then. They started looking at, hey, now I've collected this data over three to four years. What can I do differently? How can I leverage this information? And one of the things they started doing that was trying to understand various different models, who are their customers, what they can do in the, in the market to offer those differentiating capabilities and products. And this is where Octo started partnering in the telematics space, in the, insure, uh, in the car, insure, uh, car telematics area to with insurance providers. Right. So what they started doing was they started capturing driver behavior. They started not only capturing the engine functions and the, the speed and those kind of things through telematics, the locations and so on, but also the performance along with that. Based on that, they captured those information, ran analytics of their own, and 
then, based on those analytics, started providing products around driver behavior, vehicle performance, and so on and so forth to the consumers, whoever is interested on that. So they created products which they can monetize, make it available via APIs to insurance providers, where insurance providers now leverage this information and look at the driver behavior and provide personalized quotation to them when the car, automobile, renewal comes into play. They also brought this information to justice system. So if there is a car crash, for example, right, with the information they had, they had an ability now to provide data to also to the justice system in trying to understand what led to that crash. Was it the driver behavior? Was it something else or something else happened? So based on that information, the API started providing that information to the justice system, and that became their business model. Today, they have about 15 to 20 minutes uh, that they run with, and uh, uh, 20 different offerings around this that they run with, and you can see they've connected about 5.7 million, and they have been collecting specifically on the automobile side of things, billions of kilometers of driving data, and validated crashes which they have serviced with to the justice system within Europe. Right, that's an example of how the data was monetized and API being a vehicle to make that available to the ecosystem partners and customers. I'll move on to another traditional business which is logistics. This is a logistics company in Turkey, right? Uh, they basically are the door-to-door -door courier shops, that's how they started with and they wanted to move and grow into different areas. So they started to look at setting up distribution networks within Turkey itself, but looking at taking the freight, uh, bringing the freight via sea, via air, to different things and then provide services around that. So growing from door-to-door -door courier services to a larger freight, man freight services. One of the challenges this courier company had was obviously uh, how do I make it easy for my partners to uh, track the parcel, make it available for them? So integration, integrating with their logistic systems, warehouse systems and platforms and so on was one element. The second element for them was to make it available either via channels, so mobile apps or web channel or whatever the customer prefers or the partner prefers, but also for the partners to embed that <coughs> into their systems, they needed an API. And that's where they started their journey with API, right? So that they're able to provide uh, real-time status of the cargo to their partners and the ecosystem players that they have and offer some uh, better experience to them. The second element that also helped or they looked at was, hey, if I can get this faster, it's all integrated now, what can I do to onboard my partner is faster. So they started looking at API also to leverage to onboard partners very quickly, go to other markets within Middle East and start onboarding them into the platform that Argus provided and providing services to them. This led to growth in new cargoes, new transactions, new freight services and so on, which allowed them to grow in the first year they were looking at 20% of new business through new partnerships in this area. Again, this is what uh, is a great example of how APIs have helped uh, help with that. Okay, uh, I'll just move to quickly uh, to close this off in terms of some of the best practices or some of the thoughts that you should probably take away with you. I'll leave this with you. A lot of these things have been discussed during the session. Customer experience is definitely one area. Uh, new revenue, revenue streams, products and services. I've gone through some examples out here. That's one of the big things that customers are looking at in terms of uh, generating new, new revenues through APIs. And now you will see more and more, even on the supply chain side of things, all the B2B, EDI, ResetaNet, uh, and if you're in different businesses, is leading to API-led B2B transactions as well to grow in that space as well. So look out for this space. You will see a lot of things coming around uh, API-led B2B. 
Um, last things I just want to leave with is, uh, uh, which I shared through examples, start looking at the data that is an external value. Think about how can you get access to that. Think about driving your API strategy by trying to understand what those value drivers are, what differentiates you, what is unique to your business that you can take advantage of. Expose those data via APIs and it's uh, and, and market it, market its value, right? Promote it, have your teams to promote those as product, as a service, right? De determine how you want to make money out of it. Is it through API calls or you are looking at fee-based revenue? There are various business models. It doesn't have to be API calls out there, right? Think about how are you going to monetize that. And finally, uh, you need to understand the success of those APIs. Having 500 APIs, 1,200 APIs, 1,000 APIs, does not mean those APIs are all being used. Think about how are you going to make it uh, uh, successful, which ones are relevant to you. Start looking at what gives value, okay? Manage all of these through API management. Define your API journeys. Define your API life cycles out there. Define how are you going to do it. Make yourself uh, easier through the governance process. Uh, go through that whole life cycle, have that play thing in place, have automation where possible. I think we heard about the uh, DevSecOps out here. That's part of this API life cycle journey. Define your security policies that you would want to put in uh, as a part of this. Yeah, so finally, sorry I had to rush into the last few minutes, I've been running out of time. But I just want to leave this uh, with you in terms of understand your data, liberate your data, think about what makes a difference, lead with innovation through that, Build your ecosystems and uh, business models with that. All right. Thank you very much. If you want to go through something else, I'll be there throughout the day and I can share more of those uh, stories uh, that we have with our customers. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob, for your brief sharing. And this concludes the session about the data and API. This also end the morning session today. Now it's time for a real deserved lunch break. The API Connect Hong Kong 2023 conference is powered by Bnovelty Limited. Check out more API-related education content on bnovelty.com or apidays.hk for more information.